In this episode, I'm going to take another look at Immortal Creed. I just finished my first full season in-game, and I'm ready to give you my opinions on where the game stands, what I felt about the game, where I think it could go from here, and actually how much I was able to make off of the game on a daily basis, and if I feel it's worth a try on your part. If this sounds interesting, please stand by. Welcome back, Outsiders. Bronze Dragon here, bringing you another episode uh, covering Immortal Creed. Okay, so my first few episodes uh, about a week, week and a half ago about Immortal Creed, uh, we're just getting started, okay? Um, at this point, uh, my first full season in game has ended, ended yesterday, and I'm going to reveal what I got for season ending rewards, as well as take a look at what I was able to earn on a daily basis out of the game, um, and give my thoughts along the way as far as uh, commentary uh, for play. First of all, let's take, if you're not familiar with the game, let's take it from step one. And this is not going to be in depth, um, but I just want to give you an idea of what this game is about. It is, at its basis, a card battling game, okay? You may say, well, Splinterlands is a card battling game. Eh, this is similar, but not, okay? So it's, my thoughts are, it's much more basic than Splinterlands. But the way I feel is, you have to start somewhere. And this is a relatively new game. It just went live in December. So uh, I think that uh, they've got a good start. But let's take a look at the basics. Um, Let's go to the library. Now, the first thing you're going to do in Immortal Creed when you go to start a match is you're going to pick out which immortal you want to play with, right? Here is the library of immortals that are available, okay? So you can see that the green are rares and the red are epics. Now, each immortal has a specific power that scales as you level it up, okay? So let's take an example of Shrapnel Ashel here. So if you open it up, you can see that at level one, he has all ranged equipment cards deal 10% more damage. Okay, so obviously you're gonna play him and use range equipment. Um, but as you scale up, he goes to 12% and all the way up to 20% at, or uh, sorry, all the way up to 25% at his max level. You will also see that his hit points scale up as well. One, two, three, five, all the way up to 2,500 at max level, okay? So this pretty much applies across the board on your immortals. The one of the first things I found out is that as you scale up and go up in uh, from uh, novice to bronze to silver, there's really no getting away with a lower level immortal. For instance, in Splinterlands, you might be able to play in silver with a bronze level su uh, summoner. That's not going to happen in Immortal Creed. The biggest difference here is going to be that hit point jump because that extra 100 hit points uh, as you jump up in level makes a huge difference. You can almost not overcome that uh, when you go up in level. Okay, that's one of the first things I learned. Now, they have a variety of powers, and they scale up uh, as you level them up. Now, the second thing you're going to pick is what equipment you use. And there is a variety of equipment. Overall, the equipment cards are uh, many fewer than uh, a standard Splinterlands expansion. And I'm sorry I'm comparing it, but that's the, the one in most of our minds that we're used to playing, so that's why I'm using that. So... This is a base, uh, this is their first uh, set of cards. Uh, I don't necessarily know when the next one uh, is coming out, but uh, since this just went live in December, but my main point is there are far fewer than a standard Splinterlands uh, set of cards. But with that said, you have your basic cards, okay? So you have magic damage, which are these type. You have, uh, and these as well, you have range damage, uh, which is like bows and knives you're going to throw. Um, a, a great variety here. And you have melee damage. Okay, You also have poison damage. There's a few of the weapons that also give poison damage as well, but that's a, a, a tertiary type of damage. So at the heart of the matter is you're going to pick an immortal you want to use for that hand, and you're going to pick uh, the best cards that would suit that immortal. 
and you're going to make that choice depending upon the rule set that comes up for your match because just like in Splinterlands it's going to have a different type of rule set that pops up each time you know like you may uh, have a rule set that says no magic you may have a rule set that says no melee uh, you may have a rule set that says you're taking poison damage each each round etc okay so that's the basics of the game it's much simpler in my mind than what Splinterlands is okay but once again got to start somewhere right so those are the basics now moving on uh, one of the unique uh, things in this game is the way that cards are leveled there is a card burning mechanic built into the game with uh, they put it's it's you can tell they put a lot of thought into it right so if I want to level up uh, one of my cards I have to go into the forge and first of all you have to burn specific cards to be able to get creed or craft and those are two tokens that are used specifically for leveling up either your immortals or your weapons right so if you burn an immortal then you get creed and if you burn a weapon you get craft and then you can use those tokens to level up your cards okay so we're looking at my forge page here and we can see that I have enough cards here to level up this iron dagger to level two and it would cost me one craft you can see I have one craft here now you will see that I have enough cards to level up these other cards however I do not have enough craft uh, in stock to be able to level them up I've chosen not to level those currently because I have only the need for level three weapons since I'm in level since I'm in Silver League. Okay. Now you will see that I can also have enough cards to uh, level up these three uh, immortals. Uh, however, at this point, one I do not have enough Creed, but um, they would really do me no good in Silver. I need level three, so I'm waiting until I get enough cards for one of them to level up to level three, and then I'll go ahead and proceed with that. So that's another, that's another one of my takeaways here is that it has a unique card burning system. So, I mean, just as a new player, I've burned off tons of cards already. So I can see where it would keep the amount of cards on the overall amount of cards at a minimum. Okay. So let's go back to um, the inventory screen. You can see a rough idea. These are the immortals I have. Okay. I was in on the alpha and at this point I have bought about 55 packs and then I've roughly had about 15 or so that I've earned through the game and opened up okay and we'll talk about that in a minute what you earn off the game and you can get an idea of roughly it's kind of like opening packs in Splinterlands and trying to get summoners at this point in time there is no store that sells singles the only thing they sell on their store is packs and you can buy it with credits which is uh, bought directly with money uh, via PayPal or, or another uh, or also through um, uh, cryptocurrency um, or you can buy it with Valor, which is the in-game in uh, token. Um, you can also buy, sell, trade uh, Valor on Hive Engine. Um, so basically put, uh, this is the only way you're going to get cards. Now you could do peer-to-peer -peer trades with people. I don't exactly, unless you know the people, I wouldn't advise that. But either way, uh, that's the only thing that's on the shop now. So imagine trying to get and level up summoners in Splinterlands by just buying packs. And that's the only thing you had available to you. That would tell you the difficulty that I've had in leveling up uh, the cards. Okay, You can see that I have a variety of level 1 and level 2 summoners, but I only have two level 3 summoners. When we go over to the... Uh, the uh, Immortal Creed document, um, you can see how many it takes to go ahead and combine to get a higher level card. And if you have a rare summoner going from 
two to three, uh, it takes five copies, right? Or five copies total to make a level three, right? So I guess my main point is it's really hard to get the amount of numbers of each card to make them useful to you to level up in different leagues, okay? So with two summoners, I'm just barely playing in silver. And frankly, I didn't get this uh, other summoner, Silas, until yesterday at end of season in a pack. I played all a whole season in, in silver with one level three summoner, which was pretty frustrating because I would hit a streak of losses, just like 10 losses in a row that there was nothing I could do about it. But I wanted to stay in silver because the winnings was so much better than in bronze. Okay. So I think you get that idea. We'll take a look at the equipment as well. Um, I think my equipment at this point, you can see I do have a variety of level threes. You see, you can see I do have some gold foils, which in this game also uh, increase what you earn off of win. Um, <clears throat> I do have a variety. I think my strongest suit is still magic, uh, but <clears throat> I'm coming along. Now, that brings up the idea or the subject of what overall have you spent in the game? Well, just give you some idea. So I've bought roughly 55 packs of cards and I've opened roughly another 15. Uh, so between 70 and 75 packs I've opened. And if you place each of those at $2, which is what they cost uh, on the store, then you can see it's roughly $150 worth of cards, okay? And I'm just barely playing in silver. I'm frustratingly playing in silver, okay? So I just wanted to put that out there to give you an idea of what it takes if you wanted to get in and start playing the game. Now, is the store for singles being worked on? Yes, they say that's on their roadmap and that's one of the things they're focusing on. Uh, there's, you know, obviously no, you know, they're not going to say when it's coming out because obviously it's a big job, right? So I can foresee that when the singles store comes out, it's going to be, a, it's going to get easier to get in, get up and running and playing the game because you can go in and pick out a few weapons you want and buy the amount of copies you want to get and then go forward instead of just spamming and buying lots of packs, right? But with that said, it's a double-edged sword because at the same time, you also have the high probability that the value of what you're making on a daily basis will go down. Okay, so with that said, uh, what, what am I making on a daily basis? Okay, so I thought this was a good time to go ahead and make this video because I just finished up, we just had end of season yesterday, just finished up my first full season in game, and I can discuss and I did the numbers of what I make on a daily basis and divide it out. Okay, so let's go out, or go over here to PowerPoint, rather. Um, now, like I said, I made my way into silver at the end of last season, and I was able to spend the whole season in silver, basically. Okay, now, when you play, you get your first 10 wins of the day you make Valor on, which is the token that you make in the game, right? You can keep playing after that to post higher ranks on the leaderboard, which at this point in time is just for bragging rights. But those first 10 wins get you paid, basically. Okay. So, in silver, I made an average of 160 Valor per day. Okay, so it's an average of 16 per win, times 10, right? But, you know, there was the, uh, if, if you get on a winning streak, you can earn more. Like I, the base level for a win that I've experienced in silver is 15. And then I've gone up to as high as 20 or 22 with a good winning streak going, right? Um, it's also affected if you have uh, a good amount of gold foil cards. I have a couple that I can use uh, at my disposal, but they don't greatly affect it, but it does boost it up a little bit. With that said, I took the average of 160 valor per day times 14 days equals 2,240, right? Which today I figured uh, figured it out what, what the valor is selling for on Hive, and it's about $16.80 total made across the two weeks for my daily battles. Okay, now what did I make end of season? I, and I'll show you the screenshot here in a minute, but basically I made two packs. I got two packs, which is 400 Valor, and I got a, a, a chest of 26.9 Valor. 
So all in all, it was 2,666 or right around 20 US dollars value, which uh, divided out by 14 days is about roughly $1.42 per day. Which if you're keeping track and if you've really done your numbers of what you're getting off of your hive based games, that's pretty good average. Okay. Like I said, this is a screenshot of my end of season. When you hit end of season, um, they have an interesting formula uh, where there's a pool that accumulates during the season and there's a percentage that comes in. In fact, let's go ahead and just go, I just wanna go ahead and be exactly right. Um, so here we go, season rewards, okay. So the first off, to be eligible in playing the game for rewards, all you have to do is spend four bucks in game. Buy $4 worth of credits and buy a couple packs. Now, is that gonna get you very far? No, not really. It'll get you up and going and in novice and playing along a little bit, but it's not gonna get you very far. Like I said, if you wanna make your way in silver, figure on make, uh, buying at least 50 packs, right? Uh, if you have good luck, you know? So, but spending that $4 in the game gets you a creed mark so you can earn. Okay, now with that said, um, the current season's reward pool starts at a base value based on the prior season's active player, player and match one count with a minimum base starting value of 100 valor. Okay, so basically the more activity the last season, the higher the pool starts out the, the following season, okay? Now, also during the season, 5% of valor spent in the shop will be immediately added to the current season's reward pool and 10% of credits spent in the shop will be immediately converted to valor and added to the pool. So 5% of valor spent and 10% of credits uh, spent in the shop will be added to the pool. So you start off with a certain size and it grows the more people spend. So as I go along, I make a, roughly I make enough to make a, about 11 packs worth in a season, uh, almost a pack a day, not quite. Um, and as I'm buying those from the game, the pool is uh, getting larger so that everybody that plays gets a little bit more, right? Now, as you play along, and you make your 10 wins per day, you get reward shares. And the higher level uh, league you're in, you get more reward shares, okay? So for example, a novice rank will earn one reward share per win, bronze rank earns two, silver three, and so on. And this allows for a maximum of 1,400 reward shares for the season. After all the players' reward shares have been tallied, the total amount in the season reward pool will be divided by the total number of reward shares owned by all players. Each player's reward shares are then multiplied by the single reward share value, and the amount is added to the player's game wallet. So basically, you play along, you get a certain amount uh, of reward shares. The higher league you're in, the more reward shares you get, and you get a reward sh uh, your your share of the pool at the end. Now that accounts for this. You also have the possibility of earning packs, which I got two packs, and you also have the possibility of getting some cards, which I did. Now in this game, blue indicates common. So I got three common cards, but at very least they're available there to burn so I can use the craft to up-level my other cards. Okay. Now with that said, let's go ahead and play a match or two just to give you the idea of what it is like to play this game. Uh, as you can see, I've already had my 10 daily wins uh, for this uh, 24 hours. Now uh, it does, uh, I'm on Eastern time, it does restart at 8 p.m. Uh, so at, after eight o'clock, I can restart my battles, but you can go ahead and play and you can also see that it, uh, accounts, it counts up for your win streak. You can see that I'm in silver level three here. So let's go ahead and play a ranked match and you can get some idea of, uh, what it looks like if you're wondering. Sometimes uh, it takes a while, uh, to find a match. You've got, uh, less than a minute to accept. Now you can see here, this is no rules, only mayhem. So no specific rule set here. So I'm going to choose, I can see my character, uh, my opponent uh, has a variety of damages. He, he's using a little bit of everything. So I'm gonna go in with magic. I'm gonna confirm the selection. This guy gets a uh, uh, this uh, 
immortal <laughs> gets a bonus to magic damage. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to go in with the Dragon's Breath, which takes up two slots, but uh, it also uh, gives poison damage. Um, I'm also going to add a shield. Oh, uh, okay, here it is. And this shield also can partially reflect magic. And then I'm going to come in with an enhanced staff, which seems to work pretty well for a common card. So it's once again a slow weapon, but it does a lot of damage. So we'll see what he hits us with. He's playing a Junius, which uh, adds to speed and shield. And as in, uh, as in Splinterlands, you can speed everything up. I hit him with 38, and I just reflected some magic damage for him. I sped it up a lot. So let's see here. Um, took a little bit more damage that time. I reflected again. We're both taking poison damage. I'm hoping this is going to be pretty close. This is going to be pretty close. He's hitting me with that crossbow pretty hard. He missed. That I think that's key there. That's key there. Uh, come on, come on. 38. And I reflected that back. And he missed. So I won this just due to that miss. And you can see I'm victorious. Um, if this was one of my uh, 10 wins of the day, you would see also a note here that says you earned a certain amount of valor, right? Um, I will also note that ranged weapons are very strong in this game because one thing you'll see is they are very fast. I don't know if you can see this, but that's three speed. So the lower the speed number, the faster it is. In a lot of cases, these matches come down to like the last round and whichever weapon is fastest is going to get that kill. So as you can see, this was pretty close um, and I got the kill just because he missed. So that's kind of the game in a nutshell. Obviously, there's more to it. Um, I didn't want it to be too in-depth. I didn't want this to be overly long, um, but I did want to get back to you and give you my feelings after the first, uh, the first season. Um, one, I think I'm making a pretty fair amount off of this, considering uh, about a buck fifty a day, uh, and I'm able to uh, buy a card pack at least every other day, uh, just from my earnings and silver. You know, uh, if I were you and you're considering coming in this game, um, you know, I went into bronze and I was making roughly five to seven valor per match, and then I. Then I jumped up into silver after I got that first level three summoner and was able to. Uh, and then I immediately went from the five to seven to 15 to 17. And then I imagine as you go into gold, it goes up another 10 or 20 after that as well too. So, uh, and it keeps going up. Uh, at this point in time, it's very hard to level up cards. And by hard, I mean very expensive. Um, if you want to come in and firmly play in silver, I would say uh, expect that you're going to have to buy 75 packs of cards. Um, if you wanted to play in gold, and this is just, just a guess, if you wanted to play in gold, I would guess you would have to come in and buy, you know, at least 150 packs. Um, if you just wanted to get your feet wet and play in bronze, it would be pretty simple. I think you could get away with like, uh, you know, 25 packs or so, and you could be playing in bronze. Obviously, depending upon your RNG luck and opening packs. Um, do I feel that this game has got a good start? Yeah, I think that uh, they've got a good start under their belt. Uh, like I said, it just went live in December. Um, I think it's got that, there's a certain factor in a game that, makes you want to buy more packs or keep coming back to the game and i think this game has it i think they have the basics and i think they have a good foundation to work on i've uh i've discussed a little bit with uh, one of the uh, guys on the team and they also seem like they've put a lot of thought into the game and how it's made up and the different uh, uh the different things going on behind the scenes right so i mean would I spend a lot of money on the game at this time? I, I don't think so. But I do think that if you want to get in and start playing in bronze and then just work your way up, 
Uh, currently, it's offering good returns, about a dollar fifty per day in silver. Probably, you know, divided down maybe fifty to seventy-five cents in bronze per day. Um, and as you go along, you, you open up a pack, you get lucky, you might get enough to boost yourself up into silver, which uh, really increases uh, what you're making and so forth and gold. But as you go higher, until they get that get that store open for singles, it's it's going to be really hard to get enough uh, card copies to be able to level up your cards uh, for the appropriate level. Like I said, with the cards I have, I'm just barely playing in silver, and it's it's pretty frustrating at some points, to tell you the truth. And you can see like that, like I, I mentioned earlier, I have, I have two Immortals. Um, I do have some level three weapons, but nothing great, because another thing I found out is that um, a good part of the time you're playing bots in the game, uh, unless there's a lot of people on at that certain time playing, and then you end up going back and forth. And from what they said, uh, they, they have an algorithm that uh, tries to place a bot's hand strength very similar to what you have. But I can tell you the truth uh, from what I've seen. Um, the bots are coming at me with much better cards than what I have on average. So. Do I want a game that feeds it to me and makes it easy? No. Uh, do I think that they could make that, uh, s from a gameplay perspective, a little bit easier? Possibly. But it's one of those things that we come to know uh, playing other uh, blockchain games is that's really hard to average out because you don't want to let somebody take advantage of your game and just like strangle it and take everything out of it. Um, that's one of the gameplay mechanics where they only let the first 10 wins earn, but you can see what I mean. Um, so I'm having fun. Uh, and you know, it's, it's, it's a good start. I'll leave it at that. So as we go along, uh, if I have any further things to add, uh, I'll make another video until that time. I'm glad you stopped by and I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy and I will see you on the flip side.